Hello, and welcome to the Midweek Message. I'm Pastor Don Short from Pilgrim Lutheran Church in Othello, Washington. Today's reading comes from the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. Grace to you in peace through the Holy Spirit from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Every Sunday, as part of our worship service, we sing hymns. Sometimes we sing songs, and sometimes songs are sung by a soloist or a small ensemble. So maybe, just maybe, you wondered, as I found myself wondering this week, what's the difference between a song and a hymn? Why are some pieces of music labeled songs and some are called hymns? And how do we make the distinction? As it turns out, there is a significant difference between a song and a hymn. A song is usually written so that the words and music are composed at the same time, and often by the same person. Think, for example, of Lee Greenwood's song, God Bless the USA. The tune and the lyrics are distinguishable and nearly inseparable from each other. If a person were to recite the words, I am proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. In your mind, you would start to hear the melody that goes along with those words. The same is not necessarily true for hymns. The words that go with hymns are usually composed separately from the melody. And some hymns might just share a melody with other hymns. It's also possible that some hymns may be sung by different melodies from one congregation to another. I was once asked to help with some special music at my brother's church when he was a Methodist pastor. Now, we're both musicians, and so I was putting together this small ensemble, and I asked my brother if he wanted to be part of it. He asked me what song we were doing, and I told him we were doing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I asked him if he knew that one. He said, of course he did. But it turns out, though, that in the Methodist hymnal, that hymn is done to a completely different tune than in the Lutheran hymnal. In both hymnals, the lyrics are written by Charles Wesley, the great Methodist hymn writer. But in the Methodist hymnal, those words are sung to the tune Beecher, written by John Zundel, which goes like this. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy have faithful mercies crown, etc., etc. But in the Lutheran hymnal, we sing those same words to the tune of Hifferdal, written by Roland Pritch Pritchard. And that goes like this. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. See, same words, just different melody. My poor brother was so confused when we turned up and sang what he considered the wrong tune. 
Now, we worked it out, and later we had a good laugh about it, but that can only happen with hymns. It would never happen with a song. So now you know the difference between a hymn and a song. So now you can join the whole church in the celebration of Nikolai Grundvig, the Danish hymn writer and theologian that the church recognizes tomorrow on September 2nd. Nikolai Grundvig was born in 1783 in Udby, Denmark. He was the son of a Lutheran pastor. And after a brief career as a teacher in Copenhagen, he became an assistant pastor working with his father from 1811 to 1813. He then went back to Copenhagen and furthered his theological studies. It was during that time that Grundvig realized that the foundation of the church is not the Bible. The foundation of the church is Christ himself with the Bible as the living word of God that builds upon that foundation. Grundvig taught that Christ is present in the church and comes to ordinary people through the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. However, not everyone agreed with him, so he lost his position in Copenhagen and had to go to England, where he studied English literature and culture. It seems that even in the face of conflict, Grundvig was still favoring ideals that challenged the traditions of the church. He was a proponent, a proponent of female clergy long before anybody else was thinking that we ought to ordain women. But Grundvig would not, to, not live to see that development because women were not ordained in the Lutheran church until 100 years after Grundvig's death. After his censure was lifted in 1839, Grundvig returned to Copenhagen but he continued to challenge the traditional thinking of the church. Instead of focusing on God's wrath and judgment, he wanted the church to focus on God's love and mercy. He perceived love as the center of all life that is lived, its wellspring, its way, its meaning, and its goal. While Grundvig wrote exclusively on his theology, he's remembered more for his hymns. In the Danish hymnal, Grundvig is represented by over 250 original and reworked hymns. In the Norwegian hymnal, he's got more than 40. The Danish hymn tradition stands in direct descent from Martin Luther's musical poem hymn, poetical hymn project used as a medium of reformation in the, in the 1500s. So the next time you're standing in church and singing a hymn, you just may want to pause and give thanks to God for people like Nikolai Grundvig, Charles Wesley, Fanny Crosby, Martin Luther, Marty Haugen, and many others who have contributed to our vast collection of hymns, all written to enhance our worship of God. Pause and remember the words Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God of majesty, to whom saints and angels give worship and delight, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants, who with the gift of music enhance our praises and proclamation of your holy word, giving power to your love through melody. Through the ministry of music, give us new awareness of your beauty and grace, and join our voices with all the choirs of heaven, the saints and angels, past, present, and future, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn today is one that was written by Nicholas Grundvig. It's number 381 in the Lutheran hymnal. It's called Peace to Soothe Our Bitter Woes. If you have a hymnal at home, you're welcome to look it up and sing along with us. Anna's going to join me in the singing, but since she's running the camera, of course, 
you won't see her, just hear her. Here we go. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.